I'm Tom Nicholson, and this is Evening Shadows, which is the work that I've contributed to the biennial. And it's a work which has three stations, if you like. The first of which is here in the Elder Wing, in the room which is normally occupied by H.J. Um, Johnson's painting Evening Shadows, which normally hangs there. And in a way, that's one um, part of the beginning of the project. There's a second station downstairs, which also includes that painting by Johnson, which has been displaced downstairs. And the third station is a kind of evolving ephemeral public artwork, um, which is created as people take one of these posters and display it at the front of their homes in and around Adelaide. Um, so in this room, in the Elder Wing, there are really two components to the um, one is a kind of salon hang of 38 copies of H.J. Johnson's Evening Shadows, which have been amassed from citizens of Adelaide. Uh, and the other is this stack of offset printed posters, which people are invited to take. This is perhaps the most concise of those stations in expressing the beginning of this project, which really was around trying to see what was animated by joining two things together. One is that painting, and in particular the very strange life that that um, H.J. Johnson painting has. Um, and I guess I was thinking of this fact that it's probably the most prolifically copied painting in Australia, as well as being the most popular painting in the Adelaide collection. Um, for example, it's the most uh, bought postcard and poster. Um, and it, it also has a strange distinction of being the very first painting that the gallery acquired, so its accession number is one. So I was interested in the image itself, um, its allegorical content, but also its, its life, because images are never static things, the way in which it circulates and continues to um, accumulate different meanings. So that was sort of the one starting point of the project, and the other was a very particular and important historical event um, called the Kamaragunja Walk-Off, which occurred in 1939 when um, 200 of the residents of the Kamragunja um, mission crossed the Murray River from the New South Wales side to the Victorian side um, to, in protest of the conditions in the camp um, and in search of greater uh, rights for Aboriginal people across the country. So in a way, it was an attempt to start with those two things that I've just described, which have in common this very basic thing, which is a figure crossing the Murray River, which is the central and also the allegorical content of the H.J. Johnson painting. Although one could regard that simply as a landscape painting, like a lot of landscapes from the 19th century, it has a very particular allegory, which is quite common in the 19th century, an allegory of light to do with this kind of inexorable disappearance of Aboriginal people, which of course is a kind of convenient uh, fantasy. Um, and I guess what I was interested in doing was to try to reanimate or reinscribe that allegory that is to um, reinscribe it with this narrative which happens subsequently, which in a way expresses something quite inverse to the original allegory, and that is that the Kamragundra walk-off is important because it's um, a very powerful act of self-determination, that is of agency, of, of resistance to um, what the colonial imaginary would have as an inexorable um, and irresistible process like that of nature. So that um, allegorical content and uh, I guess inverting it in a certain way um, and I guess inverting it both in the sense that I've just described, that it becomes a way to articulate um, a narrative of Aboriginal agency and resistance, but also in the component downstairs, I've, I suppose, attempted to add to this tradition of making copies of Evening Shadows by making a drawing, which is an attempt to imagine um, the negative of the photograph from which the original painting might have been made. And in this, of course, it inverts both the direction of the figure, who then appears to cross from a different bank towards um, the bank on the left-hand side, but also that it inverts this allegory of light in that um, because everything is inverted, she moves from darkness into light. So in a, to some extent, the project, I guess, is a reaction against the allegory because part of what is problematic about the allegory is the way in which it deals with types. And in that, I think it's part of its appeal to a colonial imaginary because the woman who crosses the river is not an Aboriginal woman with specific um, humanity or agency, she's simply a type. And part of the project, I suppose, is to try to deal with specific narratives in which people have agency, not just Aboriginal people, but also us as non-Aboriginal people, that, the, that history is formed by agents. Um, and that's what's interesting. And also part of what um, is uh, the potentiality of history. I mean, that's why I think history is interesting. It's not simply a kind of nostalgic thing for the past, but it's actually a way to conceive of our actions towards the future. Um, and which to me is very much involved in why my interest in the form of the poster itself 
you know, the form of the political poster is necessarily one which is towards the future. I mean, a political poster always advertises something which is yet to come. And so part of what I, I suppose I'm trying to do with that poster is to conceive of the Kamragunja walk-off as something which might form our address towards the future and our deeds towards the future. Um, I mean, I would say, as all I think artworks contain contradictions, and part of the contradiction or attention in this which I enjoy is that um, there is a sense in which um, the Kamra Gunja walk-off itself becomes a kind of allegory. Um, and the fact that the painting is the very first painting that was acquired by the gallery, in a way, gives it this originary quality, um, which means that, almost despite itself, the work comes back to a certain allegorical content, particularly when you consider that the, the name Kamra Gunja, which was chosen by Yorta Yorta elders in the 1880s when that mission was originally established, means my home. So there's a sense in which um, some of the the, the problems and narratives around the Kamragunja walk-off express a wider pan-Aboriginal uh, narrative as well. So there's a funny sense in which actually the allegorical is an inescapable part of the content and an inescapable part of what, you, what happens when you start to make images. That they form their own reality in a certain way. I mean, I suppose there are a, sort of, a set of broader questions which would relate to other works that I've made in the past um, around why it is that one would make work about history. I mean, I think that the, the, the impulse to make work about history and through the archive is always risk, it risks becoming a kind of evasion of the present. And for me, it's only the importance of these historical events is that they help to form our relationship to the future. And that, for me, is part of, the, I suppose, the appeal of the poster, not just that um, it's a kind of classically anti-monumental gesture in that the nature of the poster is ephemeral and it disperses into the city and also, in a certain way, becomes invisible. Um, but primarily that the poster is a way to think of um, history in relation to the future and as a way to form um, imaginative acts towards that future. And I, um, I suppose that that is a necessary thing wherever you are in the world, but if you're in Australia, that nexus between history and future is particularly acute because of uh, our history and the failure to acknowledge that history uh, in the way that our society um, exists as a reality. So um, the, I suppose there's a more general remark that it, uh, there's an attempt here to, to make some kind of linkage between historical material and the way in which we imagine into those histories and the act of imagining into the future in some way.